And the Jubilee had been a good training for this, the Queen's six Yes, yeah, I wanted to ask you about this, because uh, it didn't seem to generate as much international interest as I think uh, no. we'd expected, didn't it? Well, did you do some broadcasting of this? I did some, and I agree with you. And of course, uh, that indeed was, uh, there was a lot of rain involved. And um, there wasn't, I mean, the Queen it, it generated interest on the ground, but once you've seen the, the pageant uh, down the river and heard the final concert, which wasn't as good uh, because I think a lot of uh, the acts and the, had been held back. Olympic uh, concert and act. So, for instance, it's quite a good atmosphere. The weather was nice, and everything seemed to be a bit. Yeah, but it, it didn't really attract the attention. I suppose. I mean, a jubilee. Although there, had, there are lots of historic facts, there hadn't been a sixtieth uh, diamond jubilee since Queen Victoria in eighteen ninety-seven or something. But um, it was a warm-up, really. I mean, it was successful as a warm-up. It was. It, it, it invoked enormous admiration for the Queen. Interesting, it did not invoke much of a discussion about the monarchy in this country. No. I mean, do you mean in the country or by foreigners? Both. I, uh, I, th I think, if, if anything, I think foreigners were more interested in, uh, you know, is this the end of, of monarchy in Britain uh, than... Uh, but I think yeah. in, the, in the local media here, generally the atmosphere was not this thing is being questioned, as opposed to, I think, during the Royal Wedding last summer, when there was a bit of more of an atmosphere of why are we funding this, together with the whole exhilaration and national... Um, yeah, um, I think there is a genuine this. admiration for the Queen. It has been so long. And for some people, it, it gave them sort of the opportunity to express patriotism in a way that they haven't had more recently. And plus the fact, I mean, the Queen does not uh, in any way wield power. She wields influence, but not power. And I think people are aware of that. Plus the fact, I mean, one has to remember that there was more interest often shown in her in places like France, where Paris Match magazine, you know, devoted pages and all, and always does to royal gossip. The American network sent huge teams of people in quite preposterous and The publics are quite enchanted yes. by monarchy. Yeah. Do you yeah. think there is a... I think in England it was, um, if you ever thought there was a Republican movement, it was its final death knell. I think there were 250 people gathered in a small protest movement and rather nastily, and, but not too brutally. They were shifted off to some distant corner of the docks where alone they raised their flags and um, there was a feeling slightly of sour grapes because they do believe, I mean, all right, it didn't generate to total interest, but it was uh, sort of a, a feel-good um, factor. I mean, it didn't do anybody any harm. Wouldn't you say that there is a distinction in the way uh, the British generally treat the Queen as a person and the monarchy is an institute because there's a lot of feeling that monarchy is living in borrowed time and the borrowed time is the life of Queen Elizabeth II and that there is a bit of a feeling that we respect the Queen, we don't want to mm. insult the monarchy because we don't want to insult the Queen but all these generations after her were not sure that we want to have this. Is this, is this a foreign reading of the situation? Or is um, an to a certain extent, I mean there's been a lot, there was a lot of gossip at the time of the royal marriage between Prince Wills and Kate that, uh, you know, perhaps we ought to jump a generation because Prince Charles is, is getting old, his wife is a, is a divorcee, he's never lived down the fact that he's slightly blamed for the bad treatment of Princess Di, who is probably the most charismatic royal who ever set foot on uh, royal territory, as it were. But uh, funny enough, these sort of moments get over, and he, in fact, chaired the concert. Um, and he isn't popular, there's no doubt. He's thought he, he sort of remembered as being a little bit dotty in that he's supposed to talk to his flowers, and he advocates um, medicine that isn't 
growing in interested and such like. But on the other hand, he's he's quite often far thinking. Um, but he 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 is also seen to live a rather uh, overdone existence. I mean, having butlers that squeeze their toothpaste onto his brushes and having six boiled eggs cooked and eaten in the morning, so he can choose which of the six he wants to eat. I mean, this sort of uh, details of his private life are not many popular. But then suddenly he at this, uh, as you said, fairly moving concert, not, not perhaps the best, but uh, Sir Paul McCartney showing in need of uh, perhaps an injection of monkey gland or something, <laughs> and not allowed to sing Hey Jude because he had to save that for the closing ceremony of the Olympics. But um, when Prince Charles referred to the Queen as mummy in public, there's somehow it's one of these absolutely sim symbolic moments. I mean, when you say it now, it doesn't sound perhaps, but for him to speak in front of, I don't know, an audience of billions and speak of mummy sort of changed the view of him.